Hello, this is Lakshmi Kantiwari. In this tutorial, we will learn about the embedded boards. How to select the embedded boards to start your first IoT projects. There are number of boards are available into the market, but the very difficult task is to decide the very first board on which you can start to build your project. So here we are going to discuss about the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled embedded boards and also we will look the features and the price also of these boards. So the very first we are going to discuss about the Wi-Fi enabled embedded development boards and uh, before that we have to understand what are the four main factors which are always involved into the selection. So especially these four factors are maximum throughput and power consumption, maximum distance range and the web access that is known as a gateway. So if you look uh, into the typical distance range meter, so here we are discussing NFC, Bluetooth Smart and Bluetooth Classic, Wi-Fi for IoT and the sub gigahertz. So here you can see the sub gigahertz have a maximum range and uh, the Wi-Fi range is around the 100 meter and then Bluetooth Classic and then Bluetooth Smart and then NFC. So NFC works maximum 10 cm, on average it works 4 to 5 cm. And if we uh, and if we discuss about the sleep current, okay, so Wi-Fi consumes more current than other devices. And after the Wi-Fi, you can see here the Bluetooth Classic consumes around the 500 microampere typical current. And after that, the sub gigahertz devices consumes power and then Bluetooth is smart and then NFC. NFC consumes almost negligible power. Okay, the in maximum throughput if we discuss, so the Wi-Fi produces a maximum throughput. Here it is only given for 2.5 to 3 m megabit per second, but typically Wi-Fi can go up to the tens of megabit per second. And after this, and after this Bluetooth Classic, after this Bluetooth Classic, produces maximum throughput as comparison to the others then sub gigahertz and then Bluetooth smart and then NFC and if we discuss about the battery life so Bluetooth smart perform outstanding and uh, a single battery can operate the Bluetooth smart devices up to the years more than one years but if we talk about the Wi-Fi and the sub gigahertz and uh, NFC devices, those battery life is not very high. Okay. So now let's discuss about the embedded boards. So the very first embedded boards is CC3200 Wi-Fi development boards and it is made by the Texas Instruments. Uh, there are two variety available. CC 3200 development board or you can say a launch pad here and it also has CC3100 only Wi-Fi modules so only Wi-Fi modules has a network processor and Wi-Fi TCP stack and it has RAM ROM and crypto engines SPIU art okay but CC3200 includes extra host microcontroller that is ARM Cortex M4. It is a 32 bit ARM microcontroller running at 80 megahertz maximum speed. So CC3200 includes CC3100 and it also has extra host microcontroller which has lots of features such as DMA, timer, GPIO, oscillator. Uh, SD supports, I2C, ADC, PWM, UART, SPI and camera supports and uh, only microcontroller available into the market at 600 uh, Indian rupees and uh, this microcontroller development board this is launch pad this uh, launch pad evaluation kit available into around 2.5k into the market so you can buy and you can start your work on Wi-Fi directly here is another board Raspberry Pi it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth supports together 
Raspberry Pi 3 model only have and the layer model don't have a wireless supports. It has ARM Cortex A processor which is quad core 64 bit. It has one point uh, it has one gigabit RAM and uh, it is running at 1.2 gigahertz speed. And this and this board supports uh, onboard Bluetooth 4.1 BLE and also it supports Wi-Fi and also it has a DSi display ports and uh, it has a micro USB power input and uh, it has a full HDMI video outputs and uh, camera ports and uh, 3.5 mm audio jacks and it also has a 10 by 100 LAN ports there are four USB ports is also available there and uh, it is a very compact it is just a credit size uh, uh, Raspberry Pi board. Its dimension is 85.6 mm to 56 mm to 21 mm, and its price is almost 3,000 rupees. So another board is SPWF01SA, and uh, it is made by the ST Microelectronics. They have said that this module is a turnkey solution for the Internet of Things. But let's see. This board has an internal STM32F103. Uh, host microcontroller uh, this microcontroller only controls uh, the radio frequency modules and it can't be used for uh, high processing uh, it has a UART supports a GPIO supports and the reset pins and the boot mode boot mode pins it has an internal 1 megabit 1 megabyte flash and also this Wi-Fi module can run on 3.3 volt so this uh, microcontroller is using STM32 ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller it has 64 kilobyte RAM and 512 kilobyte flash memory SPWF01SX has a 1 megabyte flash memory and it has a it can communicate with 8 TCP and UDP clients simultaneously and it can generate a one socket server and also it has a personal security into the wave WP and WPA2 format and uh, it has a 16 configurable GPIO which is uh, available to the users and it has a UART interface to the host systems and it consumes very low power eh? when uh, it's running uh, into the standby mode with RTC it consumes only 43 micro ampere power and uh, uh, during RX it consumes 105 milliampere and during transmission it consumes around 243 milliampere current now let me show you here uh, into the CC3200 Texas instrument board uh, it has a deep sleep uh, uh, power consumption 250 micro ampere and into the receiver mode it consumes around 59 milliampere and into the transmission mode it consumes 229 milli ampere so you can compare these two boards so the next board is a MediaTek Linkit Smart 76882 board and uh, this board has a MIPS 24KEC 580 MHz microcontroller uh, it has a 16 bit DDR1 and DDR2 uh, SRAM and the maximum speed of SRAM is 193 MHz its price is almost 2000 rupees and, and this module supports uh, Wi-Fi USB host and the uh, SD card and uh, the ADC pin is also available to the users PWM pins I2C SPI and RPS and UART is available to the user so that user can interface this uh, module to the external world and another Wi-Fi board is Photon and uh, this photon board have a uh, Wi-Fi module and with microcontroller and uh, there are so many GPIO pins are available to the users and uh, six ADC channels are also available to the user its cost is around 1400 rupees it has Broadcom BCM43362 Wi-Fi chip on board and uh, it has ARM Cortex M3 STM32 F205 RG Y6 microcontroller and uh, it is running at a maximum speed of 120 megahertz and uh, it supports 1 megabit 1 megabyte flash memory and 128 kilobyte static ram and uh, it has uh, onboard rgb status led rgb means red uh, green and blue led so that you can generate uh, almost an infinite color so actually it is not infinite it depends me means how much voltage you are giving to the rgb led and also it has 18 mixed signal gpio and advanced peripherals it is open source design so anyone can 
customize it and it supports the real time operating systems uh, and it supports the soft api setups and it is certified by fccc and ic and here is another board it is available into the 1000 rupees and this board is designed by the microchip it is rn1723 and if we discuss about the architecture of this board it has a dc32 bit risk core 128k b static ram it has room it has a crypto isolator so that you can provide AES security support, GPIO, SDIO, SPI and the event driver it has a programmable state machines to give the non-volatile memory and sensor interfaces, timers, RFID support. One of the most important features over all these boards, these boards have uh, over the air firmware up upgrade so that you can update these uh, firmware directly from your mobile phone or from the internet. If we discuss about the powers of these boards this board consumes uh, 4 micro ampere uh, currents into the sleep mode and 15 milli ampere into the standby mode 40 milli ampere into receive mode and 120 milli ampere into transmission mode and uh, here this is the last board which we are going to discuss in this tutorial here it is a ESP8266 fully made in China I don't recommend to use it but the mostly is the uh, uh, internet of things enthusiastic engineers are using this uh, board very frequently in fact with this board is very cheap and uh, anyone can buy but of course it is not reliable what I have found this board is available in only the 300 rupees or you can buy 200 300 or 400 it depends from where you are buying and uh, it has almost uh, all supports which the previous uh, boards has and uh, but this board do not have our microcontroller if this board have some Chinese made uh, microcontroller 32 boot microcontroller but I am telling you don't use this board this board is completely unreliable okay thank you so much for watching this video tutorial and if you like this tutorial subscribe this channel so that you can get update directly in your inbox thanks for watching